Hayabusa with no energy cost. Terry and Cloud Nerf. Hey guys, what's up? So we have a new update on Advanced Server featuring Hayabusa, Lunox, and Kerry. First up is the buff on Hayabusa. The developers removed the energy cost on his second and ultimate skill. As you can see, my energy is not affected. Same with his ultimate. His first skill is the only one with an energy cost. Now that raises the important question, can he play other lanes now? The developer said this adjustment was made because of the recent purple buff changes where it now gives lower energy cost reduction. Next up, we have Linux who's getting a makeover in her stat conversion. It's now a 50-50 split, meaning only half her stats will be converted between light and dark mode. Example, she's in dark mode with Divine Leaf, giving her 40% magic penetration. If she switches to light mode, half of it will become spell vamp. Likewise, if she has concentrated energy on light mode, she gains 20% spell vamp. But when she enters dark mode, only half of the item stats will be converted. This basically gives Lunox more sustain in dark mode, which wasn't the case before. On the old version, you can do that because all the spell vamp stats are converted to the magic penetration. This gives her weaker damage but with better sustain. Moving on, they also made some changes to her other skills. Second skill gets an additional 50 points of base damage. And her ultimate in light mode will now give 30% movement speed. So what can our Lunox players say about this? Is this a good buff? Next is the nerf on Carrie. The developer said she's on a hot streak, so they'll nerf her mobility to make her less competitive. Second skill gets an additional 1 second of cooldown in the late game. No more skill spamming when you get to 40% cooldown reduction. Looks like you'll have to be a bit more strategic now, Carrie means. Next is the nerf on Claude. Dexter's attack will get a minus 10% damage bonus and attack effects. And it also applies to his second skill. With no adjustments on his mobility, I think he'll likely remain a strong pick. Remember, his main damage source is Demon Hunter Sword. Moving on, we have the buff on Mia. The developers have increased her basic attack range. Here's a comparison of her official server version. The developer said she has no blink skills, that's why she needs more range. Next is the buff on Leila. Her first skill is getting adjusted with a 50% reduction in backswing animation. Basically, she can move much faster after using the skill, making her a more nimble marksman. The mana cost of her first and second skill are also lowered. Next, we have the adjustment on Jawhead. His second skill shield will now have a higher base stat, but lower attack scaling. This will give rumor Jawheads better shield since they don't have attack items. That's 1000 points of shield at late game. With his recent passive adjustment, Rumor Jawhead will return once more. Next is the adjustment on Minotaur. The passive heal effect on his second skill when in enraged state is now based on magic power and base points. That means small multiple instances of basic attack damage like Kimi's can easily heal him. As you can see, each hit gives around 400 plus heal and it looks amazing, right? Compared to official server, the new heal is quite strong. But if you pair him with high single damage hits like Leslie's, the heal will still be the same. So he's going to be good against high attack speed with low damage like Claude and Kimi's basic attacks. And since it can scale with magic power, here's what will happen on a full magic build. Next are the heroes whose mana cost has been reduced because of the adjustments on the purple buff. They are Goshen, Harley, Yisun Shin, and Selina. They'll have lower mana requirement on their skills. Next is the buff on Blue. They've increased the heal effect on his first skill from 3% max HP to now 6%. The downside is that it only heals when it explodes on an enemy hero. The developer said it's a way to make him better in team fights. Next is the buff on Carmilla. Her ultimate will have a stronger slow effect from 15 to now 30%. The developer said enemies can easily escape despite being linked. 
Next is the buff on Chip's passive skill. It now heals 45% of his lost HP. Here's what it looks like when activating his passive. Pretty high, right? Another buff is the reduced force swing of his enhanced basic attack. Chip might never leave the band section with this update. Next is the revert on Bash's defense adjustment last week. They lowered his physical defense growth but it's still higher compared to official server. Meanwhile, his magic defense growth will remain the same. Next is Joy's experimental adjustments. They reverted the movement nerf on her ultimate and a slight damage adjustment was made as well. Damage is still higher when compared to official server. Next is the nerf on Julian. His enhanced basic attacks will have a lower magic scaling. The developer said it's a way to reduce his late game damage. Next is the revert on Harit's shield. They lowered the shield bonus they gave last week. The good news is that it still activates before the dash. And you can get a shield even if there are no enemy heroes nearby. Next is the new hero Zushin. More adjustments are made to her skills. Weaker slow effect on her first skill, lower damage on her second, and longer cooldown on her ultimate. And they also removed the movement boost on her ultimate. I think we still have one more month before she gets released to official server. Next is the upcoming Halkard revamp. His splash art is finished and we can see this poor guy about to become headless. Uh -oh. Next is the removal of item Sky Piercer. It will be taking a vacation but it will return in the future after further testing. Last one is Leila's workshop where it got an upgrade. Now you can level up and get achievements while chatting with the devs. Just don't ask for free skins. Yet. And that's it for our weekly advanced server update. So what can you say about this patch? Do you like Hayabusa's adjustments? Share your thoughts in the comment section. That's all for this video. Stay safe. And remember, always blame your teammates.